For at TV, the world is thinking. Lots of things can go wrong. Lots of spurious signals can fool you. So the Kepler team is going to have a hard time, but they, they know what to do with their ground-based observers ready to follow up and make sure that when Kepler makes an announcement roughly four years from now, it really will be correct. And we'll find out how many Earths there are, because Kepler's going to find, I would guess, hundreds of them. I told you Earths are common. Kepler's looking at 100,000 stars. A little bit farther out, it's a little bit harder to find them than the hot Jupiters. They should basically find hundreds and hundreds of Earth-like planets. Once we do that, I think the imperative will be there to say, let's not just find Earths towards constellation Cygnus and Lyra, let's find Earths around the closest stars around us. NASA knows how to do that. They are ready to basically start building tomorrow, if they had the money, something called the Space Interferometry Mission. Space Interferometry Mission, or SIM for short, will go back to looking for the wobble of the star around the center of mass. Not by the Doppler wobble, but, but actually looking for the star wobble around the center of mass in time. SIM will be a roughly six meter long boom with two telescopes on the end, which can measure very precisely the positions of stars on the sky. And in order to uh, measure that, it's, uh, it's measured in microarc seconds. The wobble that an Earth will produce on a sun-like star is a microarc second, a very tiny angle. But SIM can do it. They've actually developed the technology for it. So SIM will hopefully look at the 65 closest stars, best candidates, and find which ones have the Earths. So we'll know on our block of the galaxy which houses someone's home. All right, we know which, which number they're. Uh, on the block they're on. We're gonna, once we know that, you know, we know the house is there. Uh, we want to see next if the lights are on in the house, right? See if someone's in there. So to go to the next step, you will, you will want to build something which can not only find the Earths, but can actually find evidence for life inside. And we think, again, that the Earths are going to be commonplace. And I think my personal feeling is that they're mostly going to be inhabited with something, not necessarily intelligent life, because it may be out of phase with us. You know, it took, uh, we've only been around for a few hundred thousand years as human beings and only been able to create uh, radio waves for, uh, you know, a hundred years or so. But if you have a habitable world, an Earth-like planet with, with, uh, with water on its surface, and it's sitting there for five, 10, 15 billion years while its sun is stably on the so-called main sequence, and it gets hit by a comet every once in a while. We know the comets in our solar system are coated with, uh, with uh, organic compounds, which come from being irradiated by ultraviolet light. You basically take a comet ice and hit it with UV light. You will soon end up with uh, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which are like benzene rings, even amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks of, of sugars and proteins and things. Uh, you start throwing this stuff, this prebiotic soup, into the earth and let it sit there and cook for a billion years or two billion years or 10 billion years. Something's going to crawl all that stuff, right? If there's a rock up there, it's going to crawl out or slime up, you know, as a, as a wave action goes. It's going to be a tidal pool, who knows? Uh, or maybe it's a mid ocean ridge where it occurs, but something's going to come growing out of that stuff.